that the capacity, the full capacity is derived from the side friction resistance and the end bearing capacity, or end bearing resistance, sorry. So to get Fs, we have to use either the beta or alpha method, right? To get Qe, we have to use uh, different methods. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by getting Qe, which is the end bearing resistance for so this is this is the definition or the, the name of it okay of this parameter and what we're gonna do first and that is a topic of or that is the, the, the last topic of this video is that we're going to get QE prime for undrained conditions okay then obviously there's a QE prime for drain conditions. That one, uh, it's a little longer the procedure, so we're going to do it in class. But here we can do it very simple. Uh, this actually is very simple, so we can do it here quickly with a video. So QE prime for drain conditions. Again, the pile. QE prime. All right. So if you go to your reader, let me just get the reader, okay here's the reader, you'll see that there's a page very close to the previous page that says the foundation's end bearing capacity, okay? The top portion is associated with the um, with the QE for drain conditions, so you can ignore this part, okay, so don't worry about that, just go to the bottom and on the bottom you'll see this plot, okay? And you can see here that it says the drain QE prime and bearing resistance is calculated with knowledge of SU as QE prime is SU NC star. Okay? And NC star is dependent on SU. So it's very similar to the alpha method in the sense that you multiply the SU times some parameter that is dependent on the SU. In this case it's called NC star. So depending on the SU that you have where down here in this area depending on that SU of, this, of the, the SU of the soil in this area or in that zone let's say it's I don't know 90 kPa then your NC star is 8.75 in that case okay just like the alpha method this plot or graph comes from experiments that were plotted right and then a, a trend was fitted so that we can then use it for our designs all right so that's i mean it's very simple so whatever the soil is down here in fact this zone is to be below the base now b for a pile generally is not that large unless you have a, a very 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 large pile but let's say for a one foot diameter pile or so it would be it would be two feet right the zone would be two feet so in any case that influence zone which is to be below the base for capacity and bearing capacity of a pile or end bearing resistance to be more correct here okay that is the zone that you are going to evaluate the SU at. So very simple, right? What do you do? Well, let's do an example. In fact, we can just do it right here. Let's say that you have a pile. This pile is 7 meters long. Let's say again that the B is 0 0.3 meters and it's a driven concrete pile okay and let's say that it's that now the top here let's say this is five and this is two let's say this is the sand and this is the clay okay and the question is determine the end bearing resistance for the pile in the short 
term. Okay? Solution. All right. In the short term, the end bearing, which is this portion here, this zone, is in the clay. Therefore, this zone is going to act undrained. So we need to use the NC star method. QE prime is equal to NC star times SU. Oops, I forgot to give you parameters here. This could be phi equal 30, SU equal, let's say, let's say 50 kPa. Okay, so you would be given this. So the question is what's QE prime, short term, okay, in the short term it's on drain because this is a clay, right, and therefore we get NC star times SU, SU is 50, and what's NC star, well if we go to the reader, 50, NC star is 8, 8, so this is 400, KPA, that's the answer. Very simple. Now, you may say, well, what happened to the other QE? Some people generally tend to ask, what happened to the other QE, the one associated with the sand? There's no other QE, there's only one end. There's only one end to the pile. Whereas for side friction, there could be more than one FS, obviously. For example, in this case, we have two FSs. But there's only one QE always, because there's only one end of the pile. Okay, now to finalize, another question would be what is the end bearing capacity? This is the end bearing capacity. The end bearing capacity is the stress times the area, just like we have QS equal to FSAS, we have QE is equal to QE prime and bearing resistance times the area. Well, this is a sigma, right? So what's the area associated with that sigma? Well, it's the end bearing area of the pile. So it's not the surface area, it's the end bearing. It's normal to the sigma, normal to the QE. So this is pi r squared. So for our example, QE is equal to QE prime 400 times AE which is pi 0 0.3 over 2 which is the radius squared. And what's this? Twenty-eight point three kilonewtons. That is the end bearing capacity, kilonewtons. Now, and that is in the short term. Short term, short term. Right? We are evaluating in the short term. So finally, <laughs> finally your capacity of the pile is the side friction capacity plus the end bearing capacity. Okay, so you would have to be able to get this one, or to get this one, you would have to do the same thing that we did for the previous example, right? But now considering the different layer thicknesses, etc., segment thicknesses or segment lengths, Okay, and um, then you would add to that capacity the end bearing capacity, which is 28.3. This is the capacity of the pile in the short term, S simply the summation of the side friction capacity and the end bearing capacity. Okay, oops, there we go. The ultimate is the 
so called the full capacity remember in the short term why do I write short term? because that was the question right? and so we proceeded to use the short term um, equations that are relevant to clays in the short term which basically are the undrained equations right here the undrained equation one okay so this is the answer that we got we would then sum the side friction capacity if we had it or if we calculated it you can do it in this case you would use alpha for this layer and obviously beta for that one right then you add and get the ultimate for the short term total capacity is the side friction capacity plus the unbearing capacity.